Hey guys, what's happening? Mom brought her uh, Jeep down here. It's a 2012 Compass, and the window is stuck down. The passenger side window is stuck down. So I was trying to walk her through it over the phone, but I don't know. Something wrong with it. So yeah, I don't think it's a switch because it, it both switches don't work, and the window's stuck down. But let me show you this. All right. So if you're new to my channel and you're watching my 3D printer videos. <laughs> This is kind of how my channel started, fixing cars and just fixing around and stuff. Um, yeah, because my high-tech videos don't get any views. Um, yeah, like, like my 3D printer videos get a couple hundred views per video. But, all right, so let me see, show you if this works. I'm actually gotta turn the car on here. I've actually made several repair videos with that. See, this one works. See the, see the passenger. So I can hear the relay. Sounds like it's making noise. So I did actually order a motor and regulator kit. It's like 55 bucks over at O'Reilly. So I guess this is considered the front right. At first I didn't know what they were talking about. I, was like, I mean, I'm used to like passenger and driver's side, but they called this front right. So I'm guessing they mean front and then to the right. All right, so now I gotta figure it out. So. I mean, since I can hear the relay clicking, if something moving, I don't know if you can hear that. So in the door, so I don't hear that when I go up. I hear it when I go down. Oh man, it's giving me a headache taking the whole door apart. All right. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I grab my multimeters. I, I need to access. Maybe I can get the switch up. Maybe I can get to the. The, um, the, the, what's it called? The, um, the, what's it called? The connector. That way I can figure out if the thing's being commanded to be open. So I basically hook up my multimeter to the connector and I, I actuate it. And if I'm getting voltage to the motor, then I know that it's being, it, what it does is it reverses the polarity. If this is a DC motor, it's just going to reverse the polarity. All right, so take the door panel off. There's a, there's a couple screws here. Or not screws, but they're like little latches here. It looked to me like they removed that bottom portion first. And the torques. Well, what they didn't show is the, the torques screw right here. Yeah, so there's a little tab right there. It goes right there. All right, so now that I have this little panel up here. Um, so when I go down, I can hear the clicking. I can actually feel the motor click going down. Like you, you probably can't hear it, but I can feel it. And So when I go down, but when I go up, nothing. That's actually the motor right there. So I'm gonna take this clip off here, hook up my multimeter to it, and see if it's actually being commanded to go up. Because if it's not getting power to go up, then it's not gonna go up. So I'm gonna make sure it's commanded to go up. So I'm gonna activate the switch here. So take a look, so when I go up, basically I'm getting like no voltage. All right? But when I go down, and that's kind of like, while well, I'm hearing the click, I'm getting voltage to the motor. But I'm not getting anything on the way up. So I just have my multimeter and leads connected right there. So it makes me think it's not the window motor. Could be wrong. Let me show you it's not a window lock problem. So when the window lock button activated on the driver's side, right, I'm getting no voltage either way. Alright, so go ahead and undo the lock. So uh, undo the lock on the window. Can you undo the lock on the window? Yeah, up, yeah. So. Yeah, left, left, okay, good. Right, so as soon as she releases the window lock, it basically goes up, like it's supposed to. Voltage, so there's something going on, it's not being commanded. So I know it's not a window lock issue. I ordered the whole regulator motor kit. So, one of my concerns was, is that some of these window systems actually run on computers, so they actually get motor feedback. So it's not like a typical like two direction DC motor, you know, where it's reverse polarity. I mean, there could be like a feedback circuit here I don't even know about. So, so I can't find the wiring diagram, so I don't really know for sure. So I'm gonna hook this up and just see if this actually makes any difference. It'd be great if it fixed it. I'm not gonna replace the whole regulator, I just take out the motor. It was actually cheaper to buy the whole thing than it was just to buy the motor. All right, got the motor connected here. I just decided to take it off the assembly. 
Um, let me show you real fast. Same thing, I thought I could go down, but I can't go back up. I hope you can see that right there. So I'm at 11.3, so right now I'm checking the source voltage. So this is the switch. I know that the black and purple are the feeds, and this is probably a double, double, pole, double rocker, what's it called, double throw, double, I can't remember the name of the actual switch, but it's double throw, double pull. Um, all right, so that, so that's the down voltage, right? I know I'm getting down voltage, but up voltage, which I think is this orange and looks like gray wire. All right, I'm getting no source voltage. But it obviously it's the same on the other side too, because I'm not getting the same thing over there also. So whatever is feeding this, I mean, I guess I could always splice into some other power, you know, it's not really. All right, so I found a diagram online. And so it looks like it feeds back to the other side. So that's the source of the power. The source of the power comes from the driver's side, the main switch feeds this. The orange and tan is the upside. I figure out more time. I'm going to run a continuity test just to make sure the wires, my multimeter from this side to that side to make sure there's no breaks. But if that main switch goes bad, it's going to affect this whole side over here too. Makes sense. I mean, they're, they're both messed up. So I don't know if it's a break in the wire or if it's actually the switch. All right, so I'm going to do a, a test of the uh, switch source up. So it's the orange and tan wire. It's very stretched. All right, so I know I have a good connection. I have no broken wires between the two different windows. All right, so now I can start looking at the switch because this is going to be the source of that power. All right, take a look at this. See a little junk mean, in there? Actually, it might not make any difference at all, but that's a lot of paper. Yeah, there's tons of stuff in here. Um, yeah, I got a lot of fur. Yeah, this is this is the switch too right here. So I can get a new one of these for 88 bucks over at AutoZone, but I'm going to take this and see if I can clean it up. And actually take this apart and see if like a, there's a broken trace or something. All right, so I'm gonna blow up my air compressor first, and then um, see if I can figure out what's up underneath it. You know, like I said, there could just been moisture down in there that corroded a, a trace. Yeah, there was a ton of stuff in there. It looked like there was even like some bubble gum in there. But um, so it feels more clicky now. But that doesn't. I mean, that shouldn't prevent the power from your side though. That's why I'm wondering if there's something else got inside and corroded the PCB the, or the circuit circuit board. And here's a take, here's a look at the back of the PCB. So it actually is a. I mean, is that a relay? I mean, it looks like a relay. This little white box here. And you have some capac capacitors, resistors. Looks like a diode. I'm not sure what that thing is right there. I mean, that could be the logic, but we'll see. I mean, that thing could be burnt out, but. I'm going I'm to trace the brown wire and see where it goes back, the orange and uh, tan wire. Alright, so I got the top cover off here. So it looks like these little contacts in here. They look pretty dirty, so I don't know if it has anything to do with it. So I'm going to grab some of my contact cleaner in there and... Uh, yeah. yeah, that one contact looks pretty dirty. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that contact right there looks pretty worn out right there. So this switch might be done. See, it's like really, it's a concave. And this is where it's supposed to look like. Um, let me open this up so you can see it. That's how it's supposed to look. Open this one up. See right there? That's what it's supposed to look like. But instead, it's totally like concave. can see that yeah look at that yeah, I hope you can see what I'm trying to point to but I was looking at that all your contacts look like they're pretty good except for this one switch I can maybe sand it down a little bit maybe bend the tab down a little bit 
but long term, I don't know if that will be a good long term solution. Yeah, we have success even with that deoxit. Sure, that stuff's incredible. I've actually made several videos of me fixing stuff with the deoxit, the contacts on my dishwasher, different cars, different everything, you know. Um, but let me show you that real fast. All right, here we go. Ready? Up. So that's interesting. So if you guys are having the same issue in your car, um, just let you know that this switch controls that switch. So the, the power feed comes from this main switch and runs over to the other switch. But it actually has to go through the other switch. So it goes into the switch and back out to the motor. So the motor is connected to the switch. So interesting how they did that. But um, Alright, so that's how I fix it. Hopefully this video helps somebody. Alright, awesome.